when we do section 4.3, we're going to do trig functions related to the right triangles. Once you have learned them both, you are free to use either one for your purposes. Sometimes one is easier than the other. So we'll start with our what we're going to do here. Um, we are going to be able to find a point on the unit circle given one of the coordinates in the quadrant in which the point lies. We're going to be able to determine the coordinates of a point on the unit circle given another point on the unit circle. You're going to do the basic stating the sine, the sine SIGN of the sine and cosine function of an angle based on the quadrant where the terminal side of the angle falls. And you're going to be able to state the sine and cosine values of the angles measured in radians, where the angles have measures of 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 2, and pi. And you'll also be able to do 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, just because they're easy ones. We look at everything in this case in quadrant 1, unless it's on an axis. After we do this and then the right triangle trig, we will look at doing trig functions on any angle in the unit circle. And we throw these in, but they're not as important. We're going to do sines, cosines, I mean, tangents, cotangents, secants, and cosecants of all of this stuff as well. We know about the quadrants. We'll get to sines and cosines and all the other stuff later. Here's my unit circle. Now, one of the really <laughs> nice things about a circle is what? When I put it with its center at 0, 0, what can you tell me about this circle in terms of things that match up or are related to each other? Okay, I know that was a bad way to phrase it. All the quadrants are the same. All the quadrants are the same, essentially. This circle is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It's symmetric with respect to the x-axis, so they match up exactly. What's the difference? If I have a point up here, and I were to fold it so that, that it hit the same relative point down here, what would be the difference in the coordinates of the point? Would, it, would the x values be different? The x values? The y would be different. The x value would still be in the same place. The y value would be different. If I folded it this way, then what would be different? The x value would be different. Over here, that would have been positive, and over here, it would have been negative. And I can also rotate things. I can rotate it all so that when I move this exactly halfway, it's still going to look the same, but a coordinate point that was over here, when it was rotated 180 degrees, will end up down here, and what happens to the coordinates of that point? It went from being positive, positive, to negative, negative. So that's one of the nice things about our unit circle, and that's one of the things that's going to make our trig functions fairly easy to deal with. Something else about our unit circle. We're going to, I wish I could write on it, but I know I can't. So here is supposed to be my unit circle. Yes, there's a reason I do them over here. If I draw a point <coughs> on my unit circle, and I draw <coughs> a line from that point down to the x-axis that is perpendicular, and then I draw a line from the center of the circle up to that point on the, on the circle itself. What kind of triangle have I just made here? Right. A right triangle. Now, if this point had the coordinates x, y, what can you tell me about the length of the side of the triangle? It's the same as the x coordinate. What can you tell me about the length of this side of the triangle? It's the y coordinate. And what do we know about right triangles? What? I didn't ask, no. Right triangles in general, what do we know about them? The Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals? Well, it's the radius squared. But I would just told us the radius is what? One. And one squared is just one. I could have put this point anywhere on my unit circle. And if I square the x coordinate, square the y coordinate, and add them together, I will always get one. That's going to be something that's true of every 
point on my unit circle. So now I can use this piece of information to answer the question. And the question is, if I have a point whose x coordinate is 4 fifths and it's on the unit circle in quadrant 4, what is its y coordinate? Well, essentially I know what? Well, I know that its x coordinate is 4 fifths, and I know that if I square 4 fifths and I add that to its y coordinate squared, I'm going to get 1. Yes? I can solve this equation. So here I have 16 20 fifths plus y squared equals 1. <coughs> I subtract 16 20 fifths from both sides, so I get y squared equals 9 20 fifths. What? I'm subtracting? <laughs> well, but it wouldn't be 100, it'd be 25 over 25. So I think I get 9, right? Yeah. Now, when I <coughs> take the square root of both sides, I get what? <laughs> Plus or minus, square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 25 is 5. I have two possible answers. Which one is correct and how do I know? I have somebody voting for negative 3 fifths. Why? I'm in quadrant 4. Down here in quadrant 4, your y coordinates are always negative. So because I'm in quadrant 4, Y is always negative. So I have Y equals 3 fifths. Negative 3 fifths. No, no, sir. And we'll be able to do that for any, any point on the unit circle. Now, you may notice that we haven't yet gotten to sines and cosines. We'll get there. Here I have a point on my unit circle. We're going to pretend this is a unit circle again. And it has coordinates 0.141 and 0.99. And I'm pretty sure those are rounded. Where would that be approximately on my unit circle? 0.141 and 0.99. It's in my first quadrant where? Really close to the x axis. Really close to the x axis? I think it's, I think it's closer to the y axis, isn't it? So it's about right here, maybe? So this is point 141, was it? 141, comma, 0.99. Now, where would I find the point? By the way, it's when it says p of t, what that's indicating is that if I were to make the terminal side of my angle yeah. go there, here is my angle T, and it's the point on the unit circle whose angle was T. Where is P of T plus pi? How far is pi when it comes to going around the circle? Halfway. So I need to start where and go halfway around the circle. Well, T was here, and then I need to go pi further than that, so another halfway around the circle. So approximately right here. And then what I'm being asked is, what are the coordinates of that point? So this is now T plus pi. Now, why did I go in this direction? Because it was positive. So what are the coordinates of this point? Remember what we said about rotating it? If we, went, if we rotated halfway around, what would happen to the coordinates of, the, of what was here when they got moved down here? They'd be in exactly the same position relative to the x and the y axis except in the, in the negative direction as opposed to the positive direction. So this would now have coordinates negative 0.141 comma negative 